Whenever three or four children meet with one or two electric guitar, a bass and a battery kit, and decide to write their own songs, whether they decide to be called the Beatles, the Ramones, the Nirvana, or some something they are still arguing on, they mainly follow a model posed by Jerry Allison and his friends in the city of Lubbock, Texas. It was back in a distant period when Dwight of Eisenhower began just his second term as President of the United States. Allison, who was 82 years old, was the drummer with the Crickets, who became known in the world in 1957, when their song Which Was The Day has become one of the determining successes of the first rock and roll. He had co-written it with Buddy Holly, their singer with glasses and main guitarist. A year later, Holly left the group to pursue a solo career, and in 1959, he was in a plane crash, but his name, and that of the group remain inextricably bound by tubes such as Peggy Sue, Well Well. Very good and think, all of this co-written Allison. Peggy Sue was first entitled Cindy Lou, taking the name of Holly's niece, but was renamed at Allison's request after Peggy Sue Jaron, his girlfriend on the plan, whom he was trying to reconquer. Released under the name of Holly, he was distinguished not only by the delivery of the singer's hiccups, but by the galloping rhythm of the muffled toms of Allison, made more exotic by a brainwave by Norman Petty, the producer, who turned on the echo room on and out of all the few bars to create an unusual unusual battery sound. In these first days, when he was still in adolescence, Allison was always ready to try something unorthodox. On the song that did not fade, he played on a cardboard box to create a light version of the famous Bo Diddley beat. Every day, he slapped his knees. Well, well, he only played his cymbals, stressing the atmosphere of teenage melancholy reverie. The son of Louise and James, Jerry Yvonne Allison was born in Hillsborough, Texas, and was known to his friends throughout his life like G. In 1950, after his family moved to Lubbock, he met Holly in high school. In a world in which young white people were supposed to follow the example of their parents and listen to country music, the generation of Holly and Allison were fascinated by the pace and the blues they heard on the radio stations black and by the hybrid form of rockabilly, with the records of Bill Haley and Elvis Presley acting as a guide to do it for themselves. Like he towards, 